There's going to be a little gap between the build videos because I didn't film the second wing going together and that's what I've been doing for the last month. So um, the second one's covered. Both wings are uh, all done and put to the side ready for paint. Uh, so today I went ahead and made a uh, rotisserie. I'm not going to go into the details on how this was made too much because it's not really reproducible. Um, I used a, a mountain bike work stand that clamps onto a piece of uh, square tubing that I put through the rudder attachment points. And then on the front, I just used some square tubing into the engine mounts along with some old leaf spring brackets, uh, welded those on and then bolted it into a piece of wood and then used these same stands that I've been using for the wings. Um, the reason I built the stands this way with the two uh, parallel two by fours is so that you could basically mount stuff to them in any position. Um, they work as the wing stand when you're hooking the wing to the fuselage. It's going to work for this. Um, one of the, the things that is you got to remember when you're doing the rotisserie is to try to keep the pivot points as in line as you can. You can see the tail still a little bit higher, but I originally had the tail halfway up the rudder and that puts all the weight below the pivot point and then you can't uh, it's very hard to, to pivot it the problem with it this way is the tail will hit the ground so i can move that up and down that is adjustable with the clamp on that side so if i'm just working on the bottom i can do that all right so now that i get the rotisserie done my next step uh for what i'm going to tackle next is the um i'm going to change the color of the frame in the cockpit area that will be visible. So I don't like white. Um, it has too much glare. Um, it's not going to match the color scheme. It's too bad. I mean, it's one of those things where if I had ordered this from Kitbox, I totally would have ordered this frame black. Um, white's really cool for working on it and it, it's nice and clean and everything. And I don't mind the rest of the thing being white, but what I really don't want white is especially these down tubes here, the pass-through spar on both the front and back, and then the support um, for that pass-through spar. So I'll probably go from basically right here up. Um, I may not worry about these, but definitely the top portion of the frame all needs to be preferably flat black. All right, so the other thing I'm going to dive into possibly today is this center console and the flap bracket. Flap bracket has one, two positions, and I don't like that. Um, mostly because there are times in flight where you may want to just bump up a little bit of, of flap to help raise the tail. Um, that happens when you, usually a high density altitude and you feel like you're behind the step while you're flying and you can do a little extra trimming just by changing your flap position. So you can see down here where the groove is for the first notch. I'll probably make two additional grooves in there. So I have like a an intermediate two steps between the two positions or the three positions. Um, so it'd be just like right there and right there. So I just would add two additional flat positions. So to do that, I'll probably pull the console out. Um, I've already wired the switch for the trim and it's through that hole. So that kind of something I may have to just kind of set it aside here and do it right next to the, the fuselage. But um, I'm going to get into doing that. Um, the other thing I noticed is this was pre -done, already done when I picked up the kit, but it drags even with the button all the way down. I'm dragging the, uh, it's not smooth action on that pedal. It's kind of dragging the bottom. So this bottom of this arc needs to be um, ground down a little bit more to make that pedal repositioning lever smoother. All right guys, so I got the aircraft all taped off, went ahead and painted out that portion of the cockpit that I was talking about. Uh, I did it with a flat black enamel. Uh, we did, uh, did a primer coat and then three coats of paint. So um, it's just about dry or it is dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take the plastic off. All right, I think it came out pretty darn good. I'll see what you guys think. <clears throat> it's actually kind of a cool contrast to have the uh, black and the white together. Um, 
So yeah, it's gonna be good. So pretty much my idea behind it was once the interior is in, everything you'll see in the cockpit area will be flat black. All right guys, so I went ahead and pulled the console out. <clears throat> I think uh, I might've mentioned before in previous video that uh, I need additional flap positions. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out these rivets, remove this flap bracket, and then put two additional notches in there. So we'll see how that comes out. All right, <clears throat> so here's what I did with this uh, flap handle. I made it so it's got small notch, small notch, that's your first normal notch, and then all the way back to full flap. So not four positions now, so it's all the way up. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> now I did that so that you can do a little adjustments like that in flight. The first two notches before you get to the, the first real notch of flaps. All right guys, so I was talking about how the pedal adjustment lever was dragging on this bracket <clears throat> and when I took it off and looked at it I noticed that this was done by the previous kit the, the owner of the kit prior to when I bought the kit there's a couple things that were done this one well. so <clears throat> I don't know if you can see with the camera but there's a bad rivet right here which didn't allow this bracket to sit flush against the stainless steel so I'm gonna drill this rivet out hopefully that'll help have that sit down but that's what raised this arc just enough to cause it to drag so I'm going to fix that and then fit it again and see if it, it clears. Okay, so that did do the trick. Uh, that rivet's been fixed. That was a really quick fix. So I can go ahead and mount the, uh, the center console back in there again, and it should be good to go. We now have a four position flap lever and the adjustable pedals that don't drag. We got that done along with the painting of the, of the uh, fuselage today. All right, quick update of things to check off the list before covering the fabric. Uh, secure the wiring from the cockpit to the tail. You got three wire bundles that come out, one for the trim uh, motor, one for the trim indicator, which comes up here, it mounts right here, and then one for the tail light, which will go out to the rudder. So what I did was I got a piece of half inch PEX tubing you guys are familiar with PEX water lines, it's a half inch line. They have these really cool um, insulated suspension clamps. They look like this. And these work great for uh, go, putting together with a, uh, a rubber insulated clamp, also known as an Adele clamp, like these here. Um, but here's an example of what I did. You just put it around the pipe, clamp it to the frame, this is secure, very secure, not going anywhere. Uh, lucked out with the white, actually they have white, blue, and, and red. Uh, the white, you know, you can't even tell it's there because of the uh, powder coated white frame. Uh, terminates right down here at the aft gear bolt mount, and then the wires come out. I'll probably run them across this tube and then up the center console and into the panel. And actually while we're in here, you guys can take a look at my new custom powder coated stiff grip tops in yellow, hint, hint. That might have something to do with the color scheme that's going on the plane. Also powder coated the control stick, um, so they are real durable, flat black to match the rest of the frame. Uh, so I'm trying to get as much of the little things done as I can before I put the fabric on the fuselage. Uh, something else I've been doing to fill my time this week, I've been getting a lot of orders in for the stiff grips. We are doing uh, custom powder coat colors now. So if you guys are interested in a set of stiff grips, get your orders in because uh, I've got a couple dozen that I can make left and then I'm gonna have to reorder stock again. So if you want a set for a project that's coming you know, you're ready to get it flying. Let's go ahead and get that order in. Uh, here's actually an example of what we're doing color-wise. We've got uh, you know, like a dark forest green, yellow, red, blue, white, the black, and then the aluminum, and the different color switch options. You got chrome or black that can be put on any of them. And then your grip options. This is a foam grip, really comfortable is what I run in my five. 
Got a rubber grip, also pretty dang comfortable, but a little bit, a little bit more uh, uh, friction there with that grip. I like that one quite a bit actually. And then your leather grip that's that's got a nice stitch on it. Um, so all of those grip options are available and in stock. And if you have a special color that you are interested in, uh, go to like Eastwood Tools. I'll put a link in the video and they have a whole selection of powder coat colors. There's a particular color in there that matches your project better than than these uh, four options we have here, or five options, six, whatever. Um, you can just get a hold of me, let me know which color you like, and it doesn't have to be from Eastwood, it can be any powder coat um, powder supply place, and I can get a hold of that powder and make you a custom set. So um, we are making a uh, the custom colors, there's a little surcharge for that just for the effort, but uh, um, that is available now from Bow and Arrow with the stiff grips. All right, so on today's uh, project list was to beef up the bracket on the back of where the tail spring mounts. So there's two points where it mounts. You've got the front bolt and then this back plate. I went ahead and put a doubler in with a piece of angle that comes around the edge. I plug welded it to the frame there and then seam welded it all the way around and uh, came out pretty good. Just got to you know, sand down where the powder coat got too hot and then I'm going to paint this area to corrosion proof it and then it will be covered with fabric um, for the most part in that area. So yeah, I went ahead and put some paint on it to protect it from corrosion. All right, so most of you are probably Pretty excited to see about this Apex engine and that portion of the build. So am I. I'm very excited about that. Kind of been quietly working on some of the stuff in the background. Not enough to really put out a video on it. So let me kind of show you where I'm at with it. So the gearbox, you guys saw the gearbox installation video. This is the NR prop hub and the backing plate for that. Uh, I've been running that on my other plane. So I have since taken that off so I can mock it up here. Engine mount was made by Ken Brown out of Reno. Um, did a really cool job on it. And it's all done uh, as a computer design first. And then um, was cut on a CNC uh, machine. All the tubes were cut on the CNC machine. There was one uh, area that we had, I had to cut and change because it didn't quite clear the, uh, the oil cooler or the heat exchanger. Um, this is the exhaust system out of the uh, snowmobile. It's pretty quiet when it runs in the snowmobile. One of the concerns on this build is the is the noise with the engine. And so I pulled this out of the sled just to kind of see what it what what we have to work with and found that it is extremely heavy. I mean, I think I weighed it, it was 20 like something pounds. It's really heavy. So right below it, you can see there, I've got a uh, GSXR um, motorcycle muffler and I have another older version of that on a second sled that I just picked up with a second engine. So I'll probably play around with those two different ones and see which one size wise the older one's much smaller. Um, this one's they're both titanium I think the other one might be stainless this one's titanium. Um, it weighs in I think I'll have to check again when it was like seven pounds or something so there is some weight to it. Uh, in this box here, is, uh, this is the Power Commander 5, and then all the electronics, or uh, the wiring that came back from Ian uh, Banj, who did this uh, whole wiring job for me. So that uh, fitted up to the engine. I just took it all off. Pretty, pretty much got everything figured on that. Um, the Power Commander 5 is a piggyback system that allows you to uh, control the fuel air mixture ratio a little better. We're gonna, I'm going to put in a uh, wideband O2 sensor after the 4 into 1 collector on the exhaust. Now, speaking of exhaust, um, same guy that did the engine mount, Ken Brown, he has worked out a deal with a company to do a mandrel bend exhaust system, which if you guys don't know what that is, Basically, the way we've been doing these is buying um, pieces of stainless that's pre-bent from you know your racing or automotive um, suppliers, and then you cut those and weld them together with butt you know butt joints on the pipes, 
and you get your exhaust. Um, you're kind of limited then by what your bend angles are and you kind of have to work with those pre-bent pieces to make it all work. And then with those extra welds and everything, it ends up being kind of heavy, heavier than it can be if you just took a straight long piece and you bent it exactly the way you needed it to fit for each of the four cylinders to come down into a four into one collector. Um, so again, Ken, he has amazing talents. Um, he designed the exhaust system in his computer, talked to a company about having those mandrel bends done. It was very expensive to do, unless we did a lot of them. And so he's got together a group of guys to pitch in and have that done. So overall, the exhaust system is not gonna be any cheaper than if I went with like a GP header kit where you they send you the PVC type um, fittings and you you know, make it all work on your application you drill holes and screw it all together and then you send them that PVC um, mock-up and they make you one so it's gonna be about 1600 bucks or something like that probably from GP headers um, they do a good job I know guys that have done that I've been real happy with them I think we're gonna probably be in around the same range but I think this is gonna be a lot lighter weight it's gonna be stainless one one piece per cylinder um, I'm excited to see how it comes out and hopefully it's something that Ken can offer down the line along with if he's going to do the engine mounts for everybody so um, also working with Ken on the air box we have a couple I've been designing one he's been designing one his is, uh, is better because <laughs> he's got the talent with the computer stuff I'm just getting into the computer aided uh, drafting stuff and uh Anyway, we're working on that together. I think because he's got so many other things going on, I'm gonna take that one on as far as, as making the first one. We're gonna do uh, a mold and then do a carbon fiber air box. Um, this will be for normally aspirated. Um, it won't be a turbo box like Edge Performance puts out. Um, so it will have an air filter and that's kind of what we've been uh, hung up on is what size air filter. We've had a lot of input on that. Um, went into calculations on airflow for the engine and what size air filter uh, is able to find a lot of information, formulas, math formulas to figure out the uh, cubic feet per minute that's needed in order to feed this engine. So I think we got it figured out where we know what size filter to work with. And then now that we have that filter size, we can finalize the design on the box. Um, as far as fitting it in there, I think we have plenty of room for the box and the exhaust. Um, the height is really the issue. Um, so we don't want anything higher than this fuel rail right here. So we're working on uh, keeping that air box, the top of it as low as possible. Um, and then uh, we'll be making a couple molds for that. Then we'll probably do a, a fiberglass layup, which will be the, you know, eventually will be the final mold because you're going to lay up the carbon inside of that. So you can do uh, a gel coat on it. So anyway. That's where we're at with the, the airbox uh, exhaust um, engine mount. The radiator, I do have one that came with that, that Rec uh, Model 7 I picked up. Um, still looking at which radi radiator I want to use and how that's all going to mount in there as far as the airflow goes. So I uh, haven't got into the radiator too much. Um, the fuel system is uh, basically... There was a couple ways of going about doing that. Uh, Brian Dacus out of Reno, he did a really nice setup basically with all Summit Racing and eBay parts. It's a, a dual pump system, dual filter system. Um, I liked it, it's a little heavy. Um, and when I priced it out, it was about the same price as buying the pre-done Edge Performance dual pump system. The filtration between the two is a little different. Brian's runs a double filter where the Edge one runs a single filter. Uh, post filter that is um, but after talking to Jason Bousset from Badass Power Sports up in Canada Jason um, I went ahead and, and ordered the Edge Performance fuel pump setup and the same ones I think they run in there on their Rotex um, engines as well so basically that's going to work is it's going to be um, gravity feed down to the header tank out of the header tank to these fuel pumps, whether they'll be on the firewall or in the in the engine or in the uh, fuselage, I'm not sure. I'm leaning towards putting them on the firewall. You bring your fuel to those, and then uh, from there to the fuel rail. 
and it's uh, redundant where if one fails, you've got the backup fuel pump system. Okay, so more on the engine. So we've got the electrical figured. Um, we're working on the airbox, the header, and um, engine mounts done. Uh, wiring's there. Exhaust system pretty much figured. We got the cooling system. There's a couple things I need to pick up for that. I need the T fitting still. And if you guys follow the Yamaha conversion page, you'll know what I'm talking about with the T fitting. It's to circulate uh, bypass and uh, and a radiator. Um, I can use the as far as the reservoirs go on these. You have um, your coolant reservoir here. There's also a secondary one, uh, which is an overflow one. I don't know what happened to that. Um, over on this side, we've got the oil reservoir, the stock one. Um, so you guys are kind of getting fancy and and doing their own on those. I'm gonna try to use as much of the stock stuff as I can, and if I wanna upgrade that stuff later, that's fine. Um, but as far as sculpting one in there to fit perfectly, um, I got this new welder. It's an HP uh, TIG welder. It's been probably, oh, 24 years since I TIG welded and uh, I found that I'm not very good at it anymore so <laughs> I'm not going to tackle any aluminum welding projects until I, I get a lot of practice on that and figure it out so um, again that might be something where I, once I get it figured out and confident in what I'm doing then I can make some um, custom boxes uh, or custom reservoirs and stuff like that so anyway so let me cut to uh, avionics all right guys so here's an update on the build I uh, have been really stalled out for about a week because I was forced to make some decisions about which way to go with the avionics. Because I want to put an autopilot system in here, the mounts need to go in before I cover it with fabric, which forced me to decide on a system. Um, long story short, after spending an entire week and a half of going over the different systems and the costs, I did decide on a Grand Rapids system. system. So. The um, parts for the autopilot um, mounting brackets from Kit Fox have been ordered today. I'm going to get on the phone here after I shoot this video and order up the servos so they can go in. I can't cover the fuselage completely until that's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the bottom and the right side, hopefully this week, leaving the left side open so I can install that bracket which is right here. And then there's another one that goes up um, behind the pilot seat for the one behind the pilot seats for the roll. The one back here will hook into the pitch or the uh, push pull tube for the elevator, and that does your pitch for you. Why an autopilot on a bush plane? Why not? You know, <laughs> honestly, I do enough cross country stuff that um, I I think at this point having an easy to install um, the weight versus the benefit. I think it would be probably five to six pounds total. I'll make that up with the Behringer wheel system. So I'm going to do it. Um, it'd be nice to keep it really, really simple. Um, but with, you know, I've flown enough with the kit foxes to know that there are times that I would want one. And this is the opportunity to do that. The cost isn't really that great. I mean, we're looking about, oh, $1,500 really for the servos and then the EVA system I have is the autopilot control system. So um, it's a matter of just plugging in the servos. I'm sure there's a lot more to that as far as the wiring goes and setting it all up, but that's basically what we're looking at. So that's where we're at. It's been kind of a, uh, a slow progress a couple weeks and I apologize for not having a video to share with you guys, but that's where I'm at. And uh, what I want to touch on in this one is that's part of the build is times of no progress because um, the amount of time you spend actually working on the plane, there's probably an equal or greater amount of time at the computer, on the phone, doing your research to figure out stuff. Now, like, Kitbox does a great job of packaging the parts and the manual to build the airframe. And I love that, that you can go from one page to the next and have a guide for making progress. And you're focused on the next page and it really guides you through the process until you get to a point that isn't covered by their kit, like the avionics or the engine and the firewall forward. And you know some of that is if you buy a firewall forward kit. But 
what I'm, what I'm, point I'm getting at is there are going to be decisions that you have to make on your own and problems on how to solve certain situations with those decisions that you're on your own for. Um, I took on a lot of that by going with the Apex engine option. There's a lot of stuff to solve there. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I wish I could get to that. Matter of fact, if I just brought my own Kit Fox 5 in here a year ago, it would probably be flying already. Um, but building a whole new airframe first before I get, get to that, really that's what I wanted to start with was that Apex installation. So I'm trying to catch up to that point with this new airframe. I'm enjoying the process. Um, it just is taking way longer than I thought. And so I want to I want to be honest with you guys as far as that process. Um, when you're looking at the kit and you're imagining the build in your head, it's it's a really it's almost like a romantic idea to, to build an airplane in your garage. And it's awesome. I I recommend it to all of you guys, but be informed that it takes way more time than you you can conceive. And the time that you think you have, you don't. You just don't have it. I thought I had tons of time. It turns out that all the time I spend working on this plane takes away from something else that I used to do. Um, I'm trying not to let it take away from family. Um, I actually find myself putting down tools in here at key points to go play basketball with the kids or do something with the kids so that I'm not letting this affect that relationship with my family. Um, it's a hard thing to balance, uh, but the other things where I'm stealing time from is like house maintenance and landscaping, and uh, you can tell where I'm behind on some of my responsibilities with keeping up the, the homestead here. So <clears throat> my point is something's got to give, and you don't have the time you think you have. If you're retired, that's probably why so many guys who build kit planes are retired. I just want to enjoy the plane before I get to retirement. I'll probably build another one when I get to retirement. But I just tell my wife today, if I was retired right now, I don't have enough time to do everything I need to do. I just don't. I want this done by Oshkosh, and I just there's no way that I can see right now, looking at my schedule, that I can get it done. So I just want you guys to realize that frustration. Um, those of you have, that have built can totally relate. I'm sure you're smiling right now, laughing at me for thinking that I could have got this done in a year. We just passed a year. And granted, you're looking at a stripped down fuselage that's getting ready to be covered. So there's a lot more that's been done to this than shows right now. I have to remind myself of that because it looks like not much has been done, but you know, the, uh, the tail's all done. Baggage is done, seat pan's done, doors are done, front console's done, landing gear's all been fitted already, brake system's all ready to be installed. The firewall forward is in various stages, but it's coming together. So there's a lot more done than it shows right now sitting in the rotisserie waiting for fabric. And for me, the fabric and the paint has been a huge barrier and I can't wait to get it done because then I can see the progress visually and then I can turn my focus to the stuff that's not laid out for you in the manual, the stuff that's going to take a little bit more time for me to be creative and, and to make work on this point. So, yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at. It's been really slow, really frustrating, and mentally having to forecast all these decisions with the, the avionics and what that entails when I get to that along with the engine. It's like all of a sudden I went from focusing on the fabric to focusing on the entire plane and seeing how much needs to be done. And it was just like, oh, man, I'm never gonna have enough time to get this thing done, especially not by Oshkosh. So um, it, it was one of those walls I've hit. I've got a week right now and I've got a list of things I can get done. And I, it's not, you know, there's nothing in the manual about that. I had to physically sit down and say, what can I do while I'm waiting for the servo mounts and, uh, and servos? So there's always something I can do um, if it's going back to the computer and doing more research and pre-ordering stuff so I don't have to wait. Because that's, I mean, if you can get stuff on its way before you need it, that's a, a number one time saver. Like if I had thought about this prior and had it here, I'd be so much happier right now. So anyway, trying to keep it short. That's the update, guys. Appreciate you following along. 
I'm sorry that there hasn't been more progress lately. I know a lot of you guys are following closely, uh, just like I do with Mike Patey's build. That's a shout out to Mike Patey. If you guys haven't seen his video and his build of his Super Cub, go uh, just put Mike Patey in on the YouTube search and check out his video. It's amazing stuff. It's one of my uh, uh, inspirations. The guy's awesome. So anyway, um, subscribe. Still notice you guys are... I don't know if it's because 67% of you don't have YouTube accounts. You can't subscribe without a YouTube account, so take the time to create a username and password and uh, that allows you to subscribe and get notifications when any of your favorite YouTube channels start posting uh, new, new uh, content. So create a YouTube account, subscribe, and leave a comment. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Brian with Bow and Arrow LLC. We're a dealer for Behringer Brake Systems. If you guys are looking to put one of these outstanding, lightweight braking systems on your airplane, give me a call at 541-840-7400, or you can email me at bowandarrow at yahoo.com, and I'll take a look at your specific airplane application, get you a quote, and then we can figure out what's best for you guys moving forward putting one of these systems on your plane. So give me a call, and let's get these brake systems on your plane.